Hello everyone, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Minecraft. And as, as ever, we're still continuing with the Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack. And that means we've got a bajillion different quest lines to go through and lots and lots of things to do. So in the last uh, session, I ran through uh, making, starting to make some runes and things. And that involved making this here runic altar. And this is part of one of the quest lines, so as you'll, you'll not be remotely surprised to learn. And this is one that I've been, um, I've had a, certain, a few requests from, specifically from Tristan to try and start working on. Because because apparently we're going to get some quite useful stuff from this. So the first step was to make this runic altar, which was, I mean, it took a lot of stuff. It wasn't exactly cheap, but it wasn't, uh, but it didn't, it didn't require anything particularly new or difficult. The mana diamond is just by, made by make, ch chopping a diamond in the in the mana pool over here. The living rock grows around the. Um, uh, the, the pure daisies when you put stone next to them. Um, gold and silicon and electrosilicon are just, and bricks are just resources we have a fair amount of. So a lot of the time I'm just going around using resources that other people have gathered. Um, but I use them to make cool stuff so they don't seem to mind too much. I did need to have white magic essence though. So that was a bit different. Previously I've used um, excitable lum luminate uh, uh, I forget what it's energized energized luminance or something like that for the um for the power system for the for the for the mages workshop whereas this time it was something that required me to make some white magic dust and melt it in the um in the furnace uh, in the smelting smelting building and it turned into this white magic essence that I could then just sort of pour in out of a bucket into into the thing and the white magic dust was again it was just stuff we already have a, a reasonable amount of but um Mostly. In the glowstone dust, people have been finding in the nether. They've been just picking up the glowstone, crushing it down, so that's fine. We've got plenty of that. The mana powder is the mana infused metal that you can then, again, crush down for that. Beeswax was a bit trickier to find, though. Um, I'm not quite sure where that came from, but we did have a little bit of it, so I was able to use it. There are a few other recipes that use things like stardust and magic wax, but I don't think these are things we particularly have. Um, Gosh, white mage, sodium hydroxychem. So there are other ways to make it as well, none of which we actually have available yet. Um, but eventually, we'll, yeah, we'll potentially make it other way, in other ways. I think from what people have been saying, that stardust is going to be a thing in the future for me, uh, once we start mining star metal from wherever that comes from. But for now, um, the... The, the, the one that used beeswax was a lot more manageable. So, so it's, yeah, so that, that happened. I made some white magic dust and, and so on. And that allowed me to make the runic altar, which is um, which then allows you to go on and start making other things. So we've got the um, the mana tablet is a device that allows you to carry lots and lots of mana around with you, and you can use that to fuel things. Now, so far, I've found a lot of flowers that will use mana, um, and we'll see what else there is as we go along. Um, as you can see, you can fill it up or you can empty it um, into into a mana pool. Um, yeah. And so there are, and, and we, we use the mana for various things as, as, as we get along. But that was, that was, again, not too difficult to make. These are things like glass and living rock and bloomium plates and, and, and mana pearls. They're all stuff that's not too difficult to make. It's just the sheer quantities that were required. The glass lenses turned out to be a little bit difficult. We need to make a glass, well, I said difficult, they were fiddly. You need to make a glass pane out of a load of glass blocks. Then you can put that in the starlight thing. Um, that's this the starlight in uh, no the maybe it was in the luminous i have forgotten uh let's have a look again oh yeah, here we go the luminous crafting table yes so we need it we need more aquamarines and these aquamarines were um are a bit of a again they're a faff to make you need to, you need to put in lots of um Lots of, lots of, lots of, here we go, molten lumium. That was the other thing for the Mages Workshop. But you need luminescence, you need electric, you need lapis. It's just, there's a lot of steps to get, go through to make all of this stuff. So that took a while, but I did eventually manage to make one. And I made some mana infused string with it as well, from there as well, uh, which was basically just throwing string in the mana pool. But the main thing I was talking about here is I started making all of these runes. So I've made, um, water and fire runes these and each of these are made by adding lots of different things into the runic altar and then you add so you add these in this case six things and plip a rune of water comes out so mana steel copper ingot sugar cane fishing rod water cell and mana powder and it turns into that um and each of these work and each one has a different recipe nether warp blaze powder mana powder gunpowder to make fire for example uh, then we've got the runes of earth and air more earthy type things. Bog earth was another thing we hadn't made before, but apparently that's just soaked. You, you make get, make a load of dirt and soak it, and it's, you you get the other bog earth out of it. So that was that was fairly straightforward. Um, 
again, air. Needed feathers and mana powder and snowballs. So they're all they're all subtly different recipes. Eventually, I then went on to making the ones of autumn and winter, which are the same sort of thing. Leaves, <laughs> leaves for this presumably is autumn. Um, more aquamarine again, spider eyes. Oh, and and these required the earlier runes, but they didn't use them up, which I'm quite happy about because these were quite expensive to make. The and so all this was fairly easy. It's just a case of feeding stuff into this, um, in, into the in, into the. Um, in, in, into the altar, and when you when you put something in, I'm not going to do this with anything remotely valuable, just in, just in case it accidentally eats it or something. So let's just find some random stuff from my inventory. Now, no, no, this probably isn't going to be a valid recipe, so it's not going to make anything. But as you put things in, you get um, you get them just sort of floating around around the altar like that. And when you put in everything you need, you then put a lump of living rock in the middle of it, and it will turn that into the runes. And let's see, can I can I get these back now? I don't know how to get these back. <laughs> Let's not worry about that now. This is why I didn't put anything remotely valuable in there. It's just a chunk of food. And yes, the rock, living rock and living wood are made by putting rock or wood round these pure daisies. And I do need to make some more of those because at the moment I can make 16 at a time, which is actually a decent number. But I do seem to get through through it in fairly large amounts and it'd be nice just to be able to put down a huge row of it and make loads in, in one go very, very quickly and easily. So that's a, that's a to come. Um, I think this also this also use this also I believe uses mana, which is why there's a mana spreader here that's taking the mana from the pool and pumping it directly into this um, now well rather well fed runic altar. So yeah, that's all. Uh, that was that was the first major thing that I did. The only the uh, only tricky bit of this really actually was was my was um, the problems I had due to my memory, which required which meant I ended up doing a lot of running back running around in, in circles all over the place, trying to find all the different things I needed. Because apparently I'm not capable of holding half a dozen different things in my head at the same time without them all just sort of leaking out and splashing on the floor. So that was a little bit of a faff. Another thing I did was a bit of stargazing. So with this telescope, you can have a look at the sky. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll see a constellation. Now, this is one I've already discovered. So normally, when you find a constellation, you get um, the, the, the you get instead of the blue stars, you get them you get white stars glowing in this sort of pattern, and you can see them moving differently across the background. So that tells you you found an actual constellation. Then, when you found one of those, you then need to um, have a look in the. Have I got my? Yes, I have got my tome with me. Excellent. You can then look in the book. And look at the constellations and find the one that matches the shape you've seen. And it won't have the lines drawn on it at the time. And then once you've done that, you can then get your uh, telescope back out. And you can pre press and hold shift. And then you can draw the constellation onto the uh, onto the telescope like this. I don't know what's going to happen when I do one that I've already found. And it will then tell you, oh, congratulations, you found you found a constellation. And it will start to glow blue. And then from then on, you'll you often see them in the skies. There's one over there. That's 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 the one I was just playing with. I don't know why it's in a different place when I look for it than when it is when when I see it in the sky than when I look for it with the telescope. But never mind. That's probably just the Minecraft mechanics being a little bit weird. Um, and it, it sinks gradually below the horizon over there. So I'm not quite sure what spotting these constellations will do. But you do... In the Akashic Tome, there are two two areas: the discovery and exploration. And these seem to be um, just seem to be additional copies of quest lines that I've already done. Quest lines that are showing up in the quest book. So these are all the, the, the quests I've done in the sort of in the astral sorcery so far. I've made constellation papers and shrines and all. I found the um, whichever ore it was. I've made a resonating wand. I found marble and sooty marble and so on. And then down in the in the other area, the ex exploration area. It's a similar sort of thing. Um, and again, these are all the... Th oh, actually, no, these aren't quite the things I've done. So some of these... The sextant is a new one. I haven't actually discovered that in the, in the normal quest lines. Or the spectral relay. So these, clearly, I need to have a look at. Um, so this will be something to have a look at in the next stream, I think. Because there's obviously lots of interesting stuff in here that needs some, need, need some looking at. So yes, I'll, uh, I'll leave that for next time. And I'll have a good look at that and try and work out what's, what that's all about. But in the meantime, I'm, so I made all of these runes, and I've, I've discovered that you can use some of the runes to make some things. So you can make the, you, you can uh, make magnetite bellows, which will um, cause which will speed up the mag, uh, mana transfer rate. You can make a sash, which um, makes you move a bit faster and jump harder. Um, but I think yes, it could, the, all of these burn mana, so it's they're expensive to use, so they're probably not worth it. But I'll have a bit of a think about it, try and decide whether I want to make any of those. 
I also had a bit of a look through in uh, how, how do we here we go this, in this book there's a, the Lexica Botanica as well so I can have a look at this and here we can find the very look at the look through the various different flowers so I had a quick look through all of the uh, different types of manner generating flowers like we've got the begonia that um, eats bees and turns them into mana we've got the end of oops, we've got the end of flame which is the, the, the most useful one which burns um, burns fuel items and will turn them into and turn them into uh, mana uh, this one requires explosions nearby this one requires food this one requires water which is really good except they wilt after a certain amount of time um, hour one hour of real world time they will they end up dying um, and you lose them so they're not quite as useful as they would be because well because they die otherwise they'd be they'd be a really good way of producing mana basically for free just by leaving them there um, Oh, you get descriptions as well. That's nice. So, mana from leaves. So, you can put the, one of these near a tree. Um, but when the tree grows, yes, you'll get a load of mana because it will eat all the leaves from it. But then the, there won't be any leaves left. And trees in Minecraft don't regrow their leaves. So, that's not so useful. This one makes them from slime. So, this could be useful to have if we have a place where we can have slimes spawning. And this is slime creatures, not... Um, not not actual um, not chunks of slime. So having one of these either on a slime island or with a um, some sort of slime generator nearby, and that'd be quite nice. That'd be quite useful. It does say in here that it doesn't. It, it's only um, naturally spawning slimes, not ones that um, not ones that you force to spawn. And I'm not quite sure what what forcing to spawn means in this context. What does this one do? Oh, this one eats eats experience from players and will turn into mana. And this one. Um, absorbs lava and turns into mana. So uh, perhaps if we ha this again would require some careful timing. So if we had an infinite supply of lava, this would be quite useful um, as long as we could make it produce one every six or seven minutes or something like that. It would produce the mana and then spit and then uh, and then cool down and then do it again. But we'd require some fairly clever mechanisms to do this. And I don't personally, I don't know how to set up timers in Minecraft, but I'm sure there'll be somebody who'll help me with that. Um, and that's the, that's that's the lot. But then there's also the, all these functional flora that do things um, that you use use mana to do stuff. So, for example, the exaflame is the simplest one. It um, makes anything that burns run faster, but it uses mana to do so. You can damage animals, move things around, create clay, absorb so, mobs. So, so there's yeah, there's lots of different things in here. But so far, I haven't found anything that looks enormously useful. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So the yeah, so what have other people been up to? Oh, actually no, I, I also spent quite a bit of time going around claiming all of the stuff from all of the quests that everybody's been doing, and I came over here and I shoved it all in these in these um, boxes over here. And yeah, there's a system here that will take anything anything you put into this chest it will put, uh, that's useful, it will pull out and put into these drawers automatically. However. There's quite a lot of stuff that isn't so useful, and that just clogs this chest up. So all of this stuff is stuff that's less useful. Isn't we don't know what to, quite what to do with it at the moment, essentially, um, or we don't have anything automated to do with it at the moment. So that just silts up in there. So I moved a load of it out into this chest, so there was room to put more stuff in here, and we could carry on just getting rid of potentially useful stuff in, in into there. So yeah, it's coming along reasonably well, I think. We've got we've got masses massive quantities of stuff. Have I just done something weird to myself? I've got a jump boost. <laughs> nice. That'll go well with my slime boots. Um, oh, we co <laughs> we've started collecting um, the loot bags here as well because nobody can be bothered to empty them. So that's nice. Over here, Mike's house is um, gradually expanding. How's he getting on over here? Let's have a look at it. So he's got the um, he's expanded the lawn lawns on either side. Now these look very um, very stripy. So um, good. He's been mowing them carefully. There is a doorbell. Actually, there's two doorbells. So we can, he can tell when we're coming to visit. Let's close the door because it's quite cold at the moment. Um, he's built a clock. Now I believe this shows the the current time in Minecraft time, um, and it translated onto a sort of a, a 12 hour clock face. So yes, good. Got a library. He's been very busy decorating the place up, um, and a kitchen that has two sinks, one of which appears to be blocked. We've got this one's this one's full of water. Um, this one. Well, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a drain hole in it, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to be. How, how, how what we're going to do if we ever get that filled up? Downstairs, loo, great. So a couple of empty rooms down here, and a back back door so you can sneak outside if you need to. And there's an upstairs as well, with a bathroom. Now the shower allows you to um, 
gain or lose experience. So I can stand in here. As you can see, my level is currently dropping because all my experience is flooding out of my feet into the um, down through the grill at the bottom. Um, but I'm now picking it back up. Oh, because the, up, the upper shower is on as well. How does this work? Okay. So you can you can you can stand here. Your 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 XP drains out into the bottom tank. If this if this switch is in the position it's in, then it's all then it drains out of this tank and goes into the top tank. If I turn that one off again, I'm... okay, we fill that tank up. But I can also flick this switch, and then this will lift bring my level bring give the experience back to me as well. So this is the reason the reason this is here is not just for sort of doing silly business and making pretty noises. It's actually here because we have a system. We, 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 we are, or Tr I say we, I think mostly Tristan has been working on a system using mending moss, which allows you to make, so make, but make a tool like this one. Um, and then when you, when you use the tool, it picks up damage, but you can then use the XP here. Uh, and if you stand in the shower with both the switches turned on, you can stand here and it'll, the XP will drain out of you. And then back into you through the shower, but the, the tool will pick it up and it will use the XP to drain to it to repair the tool. So it's a it's a neat system that allows us the, the use, basically to use the shower for recirculating XP and also covering yourself in green slime. Let's turn that back off again. I've lost a few levels. Let's have those back. You never know. I might want I might want some of this XP. I think I was on about 25 when I arrived. So we'll get back to somewhere somewhere around there and then and then le and then leave the system alone. So it's currently a couple of thousand in there. That's probably enough. Stop it. So yes, this system drains, allows you to recirculate it, as you can see, and then we can fill that back up again, like so. There's, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave that well alone for now, I think. But yes, that, uh, as I say, allows you to recirculate the, the, the XP around. It started raining. I don't want to go outside again now. Um, but yes, this is, it is, as I said, Mike's house. He's uh, currently sort of getting on with decorating it. He's got various sofas. I don't know. Maybe this is going to be a bowling alley through there or something like that bedroom um, and, and so on so yes he's been very bit very busy with that I think some of this may have featured in last week's episode I at least pointed pointed out its existence but I can't remember whether I um, actually came over and fiddled with it or not if I did I apologize for showing you everything once again so let's get back over yeah let's get back over to my building so I don't feel like I'm um, intruding but also I'm not getting not not getting rained on so yes what has everyone else been up to I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done stuff let's have a quick look at the um, at the list Okay, it looks like everyone else has, or a lot. Of, there's been a lot of activity has gone into going around completing the quest lines, so, which is probably why I generated so much stuff and had to go and put it all into the uh, into the boxes over there. There were a lot of quests going through. It was very distracting when I was trying to do other things, but that does mean we've now done an enormous quantity of the tier one quest lines. Um, probably people have gone through and done all of the easy stuff in here. So well done there. Um, <laughs> I. I haven't have to admit I've not really been paying as much attention to this as I should have been because I've been doing going off and doing all of the magic ones. But there's been lots of that going on. Also, people have been mining for platinum and um, without very much luck. So there's been a lot of sort of digging and making holes, and I, I don't know where they've been digging, but there's been a lot of that and very little actual platinum being found. Tristan has, as usual, been um, improving the storage system over here. So we've got me stuck underneath it. This needs better landing areas for the um, <laughs> for people arriving by slime sling. So this is now presumably even, even bigger than it was before. There's even more metal stuff along here. Um, and then through here we've got the, um, the various types of rock and maybe stone. Then wood and things that we get into reasonably large quantities and stuff that can be compacted. And then, I guess, miscellaneous on this side. There's there's a lot of sort of slimes and blobs and stones and, thing, and gems and all that sort of stuff along here. I... I'm starting to learn where things are, but it's still a little bit iffy, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And Pete, finally Pete, um, I say finally, but mostly because it's at the bottom of the list, so it's his own fault he's an and finally. Um, he's still playing with mystical agriculture over here, so this is generating lots of stuff that we kind of need. How do, how do you get into this farm? Not like this. Or this. <laughs> there we go. So down here, the mystical agriculture. We've got all these different plants growing, and apparently they, we, we've we've cut we've cut the plants off from the rain, and, and that doesn't seem to have upset them too much. But he's got a massive quantity of inferior plants growing here, um, and then some various other ones. I I wouldn't like. To, I think I think the electrotine and glowstone uh, plants might be new since last time, but he's also apparently come up with a better way of 
condensing the Inferium down to more manageable ways. So that might be this over here. The essences are all being squished down. We've got blocks of Inferium coal. We've got uh, Inferium ingots. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is uh, this probably makes all makes a lot of sense to him, and um, a lot more sense to him than it does to me. And maybe we'll maybe we'll have a show and tell in one of the uh, one of the streams. So make sure you come along to those on a Monday, and we'll uh, we'll tell you what, what how all of this works and what it's done. Um, he's also been trying to make power generation by turning canola seeds into oil and then running an oil generator. I don't know where that's happening. It doesn't seem to be here though. So. Again, we'll have to have a show and tell at some point and, uh, and, and learn where all these things are happening. If I had to guess, my suspicion would be that it's in this building over here because there's some power stuff going on here. We'll see upstairs. We still haven't got roofs on these buildings. Um, there's been some changes going on here. So we've got smelter, in, in extruder, pulverizers, reconstructors, a saw bench. That's a new one. Um, still so apparently going to have some vodka here soon for fermenting barrels so we can get some beer canola oh this is probably what he was talking about so we've got um a canola press and and a fermenting barrel so maybe this is going to make the oils i i don't know we'll have to get a show and tell out of him in the in, in, in an upcoming episode we do now have methane tanks hooked up directly to these fluid extractors oh yes these are to power some of the machines over here and the usual way to do that is to just take the tank off and go bleh, fill it up from the tank and then put the tank back so that works quite well but we're getting gradually more machines over here and i think part of the reason we've got a lot of these machines like the um the smelters and the extruders and things um is to stop people wanting to use the ones that are over in the um the automation building over building over here uh to, to make things uh, which you're not supposed to do as it says as, as the sign says don't use these use the ones over there instead because that then people aren't sad the um Okay, yes, I, I ran through how all of this worked in the last in the last video, so I'm not going to talk about this again. But it seems to be basically working. It just needs someone to come along and build a, and put a building around it to make it look a bit nicer, and maybe to get some roofs on these other buildings. I did do the uh, the roof on this building um, about a week ago, and as you can see, it's all very nice. It keeps keeps the rain out. Um, but I think it took him quite a lot, a lot of time and quite a lot of resources, so he hasn't gone off and done any of the other ones since. So again, um, there's no need for me to talk about that. And I think that pretty much brings me to the end of the list. Um, thank you for watching. This is this has been uh, Lawrence Plays Minecraft Dungeons and Dragons and Space Shuttles. We'll be streaming some more of this on Monday at uh, half past seven UK time. So don't forget to come along then and uh, and watch it all take place in in, in real time. Uh, there's the Factorio streams on Wednesday as well, where I'm doing still still playing uh, space exploration, and that's going pretty well. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what I'm going to be doing next time. Probably trying to get more. Um, more naquium processing going on because that's always the sort of the, the shortage in that game and I'm definitely def always need, always seem to need more of that. The summary videos come out at the weekend, you know that because you're watching one and there'll be a Factorio one tomorrow and then on Thursdays we've got some GTA videos as long as I can keep the buffer filled up nicely and maybe occasionally other things on other days. There'll, there'll have been the uh, the Factorio tutorial video that shows how to make spaceships yesterday so that's quite that's um, I'm hoping that's going to be quite popular because everyone needs to know how to do that and it's a kind of it's one of the more complicated and and um, deep and meaningful parts of space exploration so hopefully you you're enjoying everything on the channel and uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.